Welcome back to Top Notch Online TV. With you is Teacher Rispa, a teacher of PCA Kikui High School, a teacher of English and Literature. We are still looking at Kazuo Ishiguro, and we had started earlier on, before the break, we had started on character and characterization, and we were able to discuss some of the major characters and their influence on the plot flow of the story. We need to understand these characters that Kazuo Ishiguro is using the characters to advance his message. We are continuing with other characters. We had so far discussed six among the characters. We now want to go further into other characters and others we shall merely mention. At the end of it, we shall merely mention about some other characters. Uh, we are starting uh, from number seven. And our number seven character, let's call him Enchi. Enchi is a protege of Kuroda. He is a young man of about 20 years. He had been a student of Kuroda, but, now, but by the time you're meeting him, he's no longer a student of Kuroda. He's past that period of time, but now he, we can call him his housemate. He lives along with Kuroda. And among the character traits of Enchi, let's look at him as hospitable, stroke welcoming someone who is welcoming to visitors you're calling them hospitable in other words you can call them welcoming as well the illustration towards him being welcoming we, we look at the fact that ono had visited kuroda ono was looking to make amends about his past therefore he saw the need to visit kuroda when he visit when he visits kuroda's home Kuroda was out at that particular moment, but then whom does he find to welcome him? He finds Enchi. We do not see Enchi going into so much detail about who are you, but then he welcomes him. Are you a colleague of Kuroda? And the guy says, you can say that he, he is. He describes, himself as, as, he describes himself as a colleague of Kuroda, therefore he is let into the house. And we also see Enchi going through the trouble of offering to prepare him some tea. That is someone who is welcoming. Another trait of Enchi, trait number two, let's look at him as loyal. A loyal person is one who supports his own side. If it is a friend, he will keep supporting his friend. That is a loyal person to you. I, as I was describing him as welcoming, we say that he did not inquire on who exactly Ono was, but he ended up letting him into the house. Upon letting him into the house, he later, by mere coincidence, learns of the, learns of the true identity of Ono. After he says, I'm too impolite, I did not even ask you about your identity. Ono goes ahead and gives his name. Upon hearing the name Ono and his close relationship with Kuroda, he has the history between Kuroda and Ono, therefore, after realizing that this is the same Ono, the same Ono that betrayed my, the guy I admire, that is Kuroda, he decides to turn out Ono. He wants to turn away Ono from, uh, turn away Ono from the house. And he is working in loyalty with his teacher Kuroda because this guy that he had welcomed was the person who betrayed Kuroda and Kuroda ended up in detention. Another character trait of Enchi, let's look at Enchi as someone who is empathetic. To empathize is to feel the problem of another person. You're not going through the same problem, but you get to feel their pain. Now we, are, we can illustrate that one by saying, Enchi feels the pain of Kuroda, and even when he's speaking to Ono, his demeanor changes, and he's accusing Ono. Do you know what he went through over there? His shoulder has never even recovered. Even while they were in detention, despite knowing that the shoulder had a problem, now these are the words of Enchi, we are learning these words from Enchi. Despite the fact that they knew his shoulder had a problem, they, uh, they capitalized on the same shoulder to hurt him even further. We are seeing that Enchi is carrying that pain that Kuroda went through, therefore we, are, we can call him someone who is empathetic. We go to a different character trait, our second one for today, but if you're following through the character traits, we are finally on character number eight. Let's talk about Ichiro. Ichiro is the grandson 
to Masuji Ono through his elder daughter Setsuko and the, uh, the father uh, the father to Ichiro is someone by the name of Suichi. Uh, we are we are meeting Setsuko as when he comes to visit the grandfather and among the traits of Ichiro let's look at him as playful as a child it is particular of a child that a child is playful and he when he's being playful we look at him at the number of times he plays cowboys american cowboys he has an admiration for the american cowboy and uh, from time to time he is imitating the cowboys and the grandfather ha the grandfather is at a loss on uh, pointing out whom exactly is ichiro imitating and he constantly goes he yo silver he is imitating the american cowboy he is playful we're also looking at another trait of ichiro ichiro is inquisitive an inquisitive person is one who asks a number of questions they are driven by curiosity a curious person will ask one question after another that is the kind of trait that is being displayed by Ichiro. For instance, you are see, we are seeing that he is asking the grandfather why he had to quit being a painter, being an artist. My father said you had to quit because Japan lost the war. That is Ichiro asking such a question. Later on, he's even asking the grandfather, uh, why are they comparing you to Naguchi? Those are questions. And he wants to know. He's a, uh, and an inquisitive person is for the purpose of the need to know. I'm still on Ichiro and I'll be looking at him as disrespectful as well. This young man, when we are meeting him, is about six. Another, another episode we are meeting him is about seven years old. But look at the kind of way the young man is talking to the grandfather. For instance, uh, uh, for instance, he's telling the grandfather, can't you see I am busy? Another instance is when the grandfather is trying to the grandfather is trying to look through the paintings that he is currently doing. He's asking the grandfather, who told you you can look at those? Who told you can look at those? That can be found on page 30. That brings out a disrespectful young man. We go ahead to yet another character, another character by the name of Mrs. Kawakami. Mrs. Kawakami had been a pub owner and we're being told she existed even during the era of the Migihidari. Migihidari was a quite a huge pub that attracted a lot of customers. But hers was not a big establishment compared to the Migihidari. And what is being noted in the book is that her place has always remained constant. In other words, we are not seeing growth in Mrs. Kawakami's pub. Among the traits of Mrs. Kawakami, let's look at her as someone who is hopeful. Mrs. Kawakami is hopeful in that even after most establishments had closed up after the loss of the war of Japan, most establishments had closed up. There was some, t some rebuilding. Even someone is offering to buy her out, but she, she has that hope that one day it will thrive. The establishment will thrive. And even when it thrives, she will be able to expand and be in a position to serve all her customers. This hope is what is even making her to solicit the help of Ono. She's telling Ono, go, be going out there. And when you see your old associates, be inviting them to my establishment. And through you, our my pub will grow at a greater height. That is someone who is hopeful. Her hope only dies at the final period where we are seeing that she sells out and she moves away because what tells us that what tells us that she sold is that her what used to be her pub the kawakamis we see that someone new occupies the place and a new building in fact it's not even someone new a new building occupies that particular spot another trait of mrs kawakami is that she is sympathetic there's an incident that happened to someone that we, can, we, we shall be calling the Hirayama boy. The Hirayama boy had been an orphan who had been raised by, uh, who had been raised at the convent. And this Hirayama boy, he was not straight in the head. He was not 100% when it, when, it, when it comes to the brain function. And he used to operate 
on uh, when he gets used to something he operates on the fact that familiarity now this young man used to sing some songs some songs that used to earn him some kind of endearing towards the people people will drop money money in his bowl as a as a way of showing appreciation for his singing but then after japan lost the war what happens for the same songs this young man was beaten up for singing the same songs that are reminding people of the way japan lost the war and one person in that pub was talking about it serves him right he needs to be taught new songs to be singing but on the other side you are seeing that mrs kawakami sympathizes Mrs. Mrs. Kawakami sympathizes with what the Hirayama boy goes through. We are going to look still at another character. Another character we are going to call the tortoise. The tortoise, I'll just talk, uh, give one of his name. He is someone called Mr. Nakahara. Mr. Nakahara, but more popularly they're calling him the tortoise because of his slow pace. He has even at a particular point been accused of laziness as well as wanting to ride on the hard work of the other people. You don't want to work so that you can work for you because where he was working at Master Takeda's, they used to paint mass paintings for exports to be bought by to be bought uh, to be bought by tourists. And among the traits of the tortoise, Mr. Nakahara, he is someone we can call grateful grateful on the uh, for the fact that at a certain time the his co-workers ganged up against him the time that they were accusing him of being lazy being slow he wants to ride on the hard work of the other people and ono had come to his defense ono had said not everyone is like mr nakahara over here mr nakahara is someone who cannot compromise quality for quantity he is doing his best later on we see that nakahara is very grateful towards Ono. He even goes ahead and verbally uh, thanks Ono, telling Ono that if he had any money, he would have uh, he would have bought him a gift. But then the kind of money he was holding was quite minimal, and buying Ono any gift would look like an insult. What I can buy you with little money will look like an insult. But know that I'm forever grateful to you. Still on him being grateful, we are looking at. Uh, we, can, we are looking at Mr. Nakahara at a certain time when Ono was trying to also make him go uh, with him to a new establishment working under Morisan. And he, for a second time, he still mentions the fact that I'm very grateful for the way you've treated me while we were working at Master Takeda's. That is still an illustration that uh, Takahara, Mr. Nakahara that Mr. Nakahara is grateful. Apart from being uh, grateful, a, another character trait of Mr. Nakahara, he is keen. He is keen in the fact that he is painting, and when he is painting, as much as others are accusing him of being slow, he says that he's not the type to compromise quality over quantity. He'd rather take forever, but then do a good job. That is one illustration that Nakahara is keen. Apart from that illustration, we are seeing that also when he, he was recommended to work under Morisan. At first, he used to lag behind, but later on, we are seeing that he started to master the kind of paintings that Morisan wanted. And from time to time, uh, Morisan started to pay more attention to the work that uh, to the work that he was doing. Therefore, he was keen in his work and he was improving. Another trait of Mr. Nakahara, the tortoise, let's look at him as frank. A frank person is the one who will tell you the truth despite the situation. He's frank in the fact that he, ex he warns Ono of his political style of painting. He tells Ono that upon Morisan discovering this, he won't be happy about it. He tells Ono the truth as opposed to lying to him that, hey, you are doing a very good job and all. He tells him outright. This your style of painting will land you in problems. We are lastly seeing him as someone who is loyal. A loyal person, we are saying, 
he sticks with his own. We are looking at his loyalty. He expresses his loyalty when Ono approaches him. Approaches him to leave Takeda's farm. And he is loyal to the fact that he says, when I joined this farm of Master Takeda, I joined it after someone put in a good word for me. If I have to leave Master Takeda, I feel bad. I'll do it with a heavy heart. That is someone who is loyal. Still, he portrays loyalty to Morisan's style of painting. When he is being invited to go and start painting propagandist paintings, he does not succumb to uh, Ono's advice this time round. Therefore, he comes out as loyal. We still have other character, other characters. We still have other characters that we shall not uh, say a lot about them, but we want you to get familiar with them so that even in the eventuality of an essay, you have your characters right upon mentioning them. We shall talk about characters such as Suichi, Mrs. Suzuki, the Hirayama boy, Taro, Taro Saito, Mr. Saito, Jiromiyake, Mitsao, Kenji, Naguchi, and even Michiko. We just want to know who are these people, even though maybe we'll not go into their traits. Let me start with Suichi. When I'll be talking about Suichi, Suichi is Ono's son-in-law. He has he is married to he is married to Setsuko, the elder daughter, and he is the father to Ichiro. When you are understanding Suichi, Suichi is someone from the first uh, from the first instance you, have, instance you are being told that he used to be someone who was respectful towards Ono. Later on, he is portraying some kind of bitterness towards Ono. And in, in your understanding, you should understand that this guy, he lost the respect that he had for Ono. He used to feel that Ono, he used to feel that the generation of Ono duped the younger generation into going to war. The younger generation is the one that lost their lives, yet these people are still unperturbed. They are leading their lives the normal way. That is what is making him bitter. And we can see the bitterness uh, coming out during the burial of Kenji's ashes. He breaks down emotionally and he goes ahead when he's now being, uh, being asked what, uh, what was the cause of that. He attributes it to the fact that the younger people were sent on a they were sent on a useless course, a cause that made them to lose their lives, yet the elder generation, they are still where they are. Their lives are unchanged. And he calls this the cowardice, the greatest cowardice of all. That shows that he has lost the respect that he had for honor. Another character that we shall merely mention, let's talk about Kenji. Kenji had been the only son of Masuji Ono and Michiko. We don't meet Kenji. He's, he is actually a shadow character. He's merely being mentioned. Kenji had been among the young men who went to fight for Japan and they lost their lives. All that is sent home are the ashes of Kenji. That is what they are burying. And Setsuko notes that he will be okay even if these are not entirely his ashes, but they are mixed with the ashes of his colleagues. He won't be having a problem with that. That is Kenji. Another character we shall mention is Mrs. Suzuki. Mrs. Suzuki doubles up as the housekeeper for Matsuda, as well as the nurse. We see a lady who is dutiful. She takes her duty very seriously. She's the one who is giving Matsuda his medicines. She's the one who is preparing tea in case Matsuda has visitors. At the same time, she takes care of him even when he's seated, maybe. She goes ahead and tells him, or you're supposed to go back and it is now your resting time. She's also caring as well as apart from being dutiful, she is also caring. We talk about another character by the name of Michiko. Michiko had been the wife of Masuji Ono. Michiko is yet another shadow character. We don't get to meet her. We only meet her in, she's only mentioned. We only meet, we only hear about her. Michiko had gotten acquainted uh, with had gotten acquainted with her husband Ono 
through a connection from Matsuda. There's a role that Matsuda had played. Now that their go between, their go between was not doing, was not really doing a good job. Therefore, uh, the, uh, therefore, Matsuda took over and he helped them to reach a consensus and they ended up getting married. We also have another person we shall call Jiromiyake. Jiromiyake and uh, Jiromiyake and Nariko, Jiromiyake and Nariko had been planned for, they had been intended for marriage. They had been intended for marriage, but then the family of Miyake, the family of Jiro, pulled out on account of Ono's past. That And later on, we are learning that when he comes across Noriko, there's a time they meet. He is ashamed, but he is. He admits to the fact that he is engaged to be married to a new person. They also encounter, there's, there's also a, a time he encounters with Masuji Ono, and he gives a narrative about his the boss of his parent company who had taken his own life. And he says that they, as a company, they feel the relief. Therefore, he is appreciating the fact that the parent company, sorry, he is appreciating the fact that the president of his parent company took his own life. He appreciates the, he appreciates honorable suicide. That is it about Jiromiyake. We're still going to look at another person by the name of Naguchi. Naguchi has been a composer, a composer of songs. The same songs have been known to arouse feelings of nationalism, feelings of aggression in people. And when people sang those songs, the people felt aroused, felt that they need to attack. Later on, we see that Naguchi feels remorse. Therefore, you can call him remorseful. He feels remorse. And for that reason, he ends up committing suicide as a way of apology. Another character we are going to talk about, let's talk about Sasaki. Sasaki had been a promising student at Amori-san, and Sasaki had gone away from the style of painting of the teacher, therefore he had been turned away. After Sasaki had been turned away, that saw the rise of Ono. Now Ono be, uh, became the favorite student of Morisan after the turning away of Sasaki. Another character we are going to talk about, and we are almost coming to a conclusion, we are going to talk about Taro Saito. Taro Saito is the one who ended up marrying, who ended up marrying Noriko, and he is someone who is kind as well as respectful. From Ono's appraisal, he says that the politeness that he sees in, in uh, Taro Saito is reminiscent of how sweet he was when, before they fell out. Therefore, you can look at him as polite, respectful. He ends up marrying Noriko and together they're expecting a child to be brought, uh, to be, uh, brought forth later within the year 1950. Uh, we are finally ending with a character by the name of Mr. Saito. The father, Mr. Saito, we are, in fact, let's call him Dr. Saito. He is a professor at a certain Uemachi, Uemachi College, the college in which Kuroda was seeking to be employed. And he had, he had been uh, forthcoming. In, he had been forthcoming in telling... He had been forthcoming in telling Ono that he they had an they had someone in common, someone that they knew they had an acquaintance in common. That is Dr. Saito. We can talk about him as an art enthusiast as well. And according to Ono, they had not they knew each other from a long time ago when he moved into the neighborhood. He found Dr. Saito, but then they had not really uh, related at a close. At a they had not really. Uh, they had not related closely until when their two families were engaged for marriage. That is it about all the characters that are uh, that are in Kazuo Ishiguro as an artist of the floating world. Understanding these characters now, and we'll be going later on into a, in another later episode into the themes. We shall be at par in understanding. Try as much as possible to master the names of these characters. I've been your I've been your teacher, Teacher Rispa. Until next time, have a great time.